May I ask a question? Yes. So should be the video be on? Not necessary. Uh, it's 11.05, so I think we are good to start. So before we start, I would like to just welcome you and uh, also appreciate uh, all of you, especially people who have been on the front line in the fight against uh, coronavirus. And um, just want us to do something uh, unique. Uh, we will clap uh, for all of you for at least five seconds. So uh, we start on my count. One, two, three, let's go. You're on mute. Uh, thank you very much. So that's just to appreciate uh, all of you who have been on the front line uh, in the fight against coronavirus. So to uh, just let you know, uh, I will be helped by my colleague, Juliet Juguna, who is the executive officer for the School of Nursing and Midwifery at Khan University. And also to just take you through the program, we will start with opening remarks from the Dean uh, School of Nursing. And then we will have the presentation from uh, Isabel Cambo, who is the academic head at Aga Khan University School of Nursing in Nairobi. Then we will go to presentation uh, for Uganda, which shall be led by Joseph, who is the academic head Uganda. Then we will have uh, one of our students, Lilian, who will share about student experience. And then we will have um, Jotham Ireri, uh, the president of the Alumni Council, to talk a little bit about the uh, alumni experience as far as alumni matters are concerned. And then we will finish our open day by question and answers. Uh, but you can still uh, write the questions in the chat. We will be noting them down and we will respond to them at the end of the session. So welcome very much. And without uh, wasting much time, I would like to uh, hand over to our Dean, Dr. Yunis Indirangu, to open the session. Over to you, Dr. Yunis. midst of very difficult circumstances. So it's important to acknowledge that and to appreciate that. So thank you for all the good work you're doing and for the sacrifice. So if you look at the recently released World Health Organization recommendation on the state of nursing globally, there was a lot of emphasis on the need to educate and employ nurses 
across low and middle income countries where both Tanzania and Kenya, I mean, both Uganda, Kenya, as well as Tanzania fall. Right now, we have a shortfall of about 5.9 million nurses, and we need these nurses in order to provide universal health coverage and to ensure that at least all members of our communities and the population are able to access health care. Um, at the Khan University School of Nursing and Midwifery is really key in playing this part of educating nurses. So far since we started in Uganda in the year 2000, we've graduated 2,600 nurses and midwives across Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania. And I think it's important to note that a lot of those graduates have gone on to do great things at various levels of care and le various levels of leadership. We have people who are policymakers, who are well-trained, skilled practitioners. We have academicians, we have leaders in all sorts of fields. And I have to, you know, I can mention a few because there are quite a number. We have Mary Musoke, who owns a clinic in Uganda. We have Mama Gita, among others. In Kenya, we have Zedi, who's really been at the fore in the fight against COVID and works and leads the team at the, um, at the isolation center at Kenya National Hospital. But that is just a tip of the iceberg. It's just a drop in the ocean of all the great things our alumni out there are doing. Coming back to the pandemic and to the education uh, as it's happening at the moment, we do know that the institutions were closed in line with government directives in the two countries. And what we've done as a school of nursing is to do the best we can to move online to online learning, which has enabled us to complete the semester that we just had. And we are working hard to see if we can work based on the directives that are given by government to ensure that at least we are able to do our programs online and if we're allowable, do the exams as well. The key thing for us as a school is to make sure that at least we are training graduates who are able to handle complex situations and then predictable situations such as the one COVID-19 has presented. In view of the fact that we know our potential applicants are really um, engaged at the front line, we have extended the application deadline to 29th of June to give those who are still trying to get the applications complete an opportunity to complete the applications. In addition to that, we will, as soon as the government directives allow uh, resumption of face-to-face -face teaching, we are already working on ways to make sure that we will protect our students through not only scheduling classes in a manner that ensures that we have few people on campus, but also uh, beefing up our, our online learning platform so that individuals are able to access um, the lessons and not miss anything in spite of being engaged in the service that you're providing. Allow me now to really talk about a new program that we are introducing in the region, and that's the Advanced Practice Nurse Masters. This um, program is geared towards training nurse practitioners, and we'll also have the Advanced Practice Midwifery Program that will be geared towards training midwifery practitioners. So in, 20, in this year, we'll start the APN program, as, it's, as the acronym says, and we've already had the application windows open for Kenya, where the program is already approved. As the, as the campuses expand and as the university campus in Uganda is completed, this is one of the novel programs that are also going to be introduced in that campus. Just to say a little bit more about the Advanced Practice Nursing Masters, this master's is in line and in response to the global move towards nursing education. You will note globally uh, in the US, UK, Australia, and other countries, there's a move towards ensuring that nurses and midwives are trained at a level that enhances their ability to provide independent practice. Educating nurses at this level will play a huge role in primary healthcare, but also in ensuring that the move towards universal health coverage becomes a reality for the countries where the School of Nursing and Midwifery is based. So besides the clinical and practice expertise, this particular program helps build certain skills like leadership skills, both clinical and otherwise, but also ensures that as an individual, you're able to create and develop certain uh, characteristics of you as an individual that help you succeed in whatever field of expertise that you find yourself in. Interestingly enough, I'm a graduate of the Advanced Practice uh, Nursing Program. I did this program in 2006-2005 uh, uh, in the UK at the time. And I have to say from my own personal experience, there's a way the program helps you 
navigate the profession, but also gives you an avenue to really excel as an individual, but also uh, help grow the profession. For next year, please look out for the advanced practice midwifery um, announcements for applications, and we'll be more than happy to do that. I'll have to note um, and emphasize that for our master's programs in the schools of nursing and midwifery at AKU, we will have sufficient uh, supervisors for your research projects. And this is a program that will end in a timely manner as we have already demonstrated even with our own upgrading programs. So we look forward to receiving your applications and to having more conversations about this. Without much ado, I'll end by saying welcome to Aga Khan University, welcome to the School of Nursing Open Day webinar, and really feel free to engage with us and ask as many questions as you'd wish to. The chat is open for that, and even then, there'll be an opportunity for a q and A. I'm confident that the team that is organizing this today is more than able to assist and guide and please do not end the engagement with us at this point in time. Please do continue to engage with us. We look forward to building the nursing profession and the midwifery profession in the, in the East African region. And we look forward to working hand in hand to contributing in a great way towards universal health coverage and improving the livelihoods of the people we serve. Thank you. Over to you, Mandela. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation and the opening remarks uh, from our dean. So I will hand over to Isa. Isabel, who is the academic head. So Isabel. Thank you, everyone. Um, just like uh, the Dean East Africa uh, Eunice Dirango has said, we are really happy to have you attend this open day. Uh, of course, we would have loved to attend face to face, have many activities. Um, uh, it's easier when you meet people face to face, but uh, unfortunately, this is uh, COVID crisis times, and we have to work with what we have for now. So I really uh, want to appreciate you and all I want to do is present what programs we have in uh, School of Nursing and Midwifery in Kenya. Um, and then uh, Joseph Muzera will present for what programs that we have in Uganda um, so that we are able to give you information that you require to help you make a decision to join us. Um, and also, if you are already in the application process, uh, any challenges you may have uh, that you can be able to teach in. Kindly, you could mute your mics uh, as we go along. Uh, so we have a long history, as uh, Dr. Inis Dirango has said, we. If you see a small, this small building is where we started um, and we have come a long way. We started with one program and now we are moving on uh, from undergraduate programs to master's programs. And we hope in the near future, uh, we will move to give, to provide uh, PhDs, hopefully. So other can educate leaders who make a difference in the lives of their fellow citizens. Uh, we look at our needs uh, locally, we look at our needs uh, internationally and see how we can be able uh, to develop and prepare nurses and midwives who are able to cater not only uh, for local needs, but nurses who can be uh, able to also look at uh, global health needs as well. And in everything we do, we strive to raise the standards of living in the societies we work. So we also have uh, a, our social responsibility to work with communities and other kind of university uh, through our, our, uh, our current development network, work with different communities uh, in order to be able to improve their lives. Um, and also we work closely with the government in order to make sure that we are in keeping with government objectives um, and the vision of our nations. So SONAM was established, as has been said, in 2001 to provide high quality training to working nurses and midwives. Our programs develop capacity in leadership, critical thinking, and service innovation. So um, as this is to say that that is a niche that we have for many years uh, been able to work with or been able to focus on. Our programs, like I have said, aim to address service gaps 
and transform the landscape of health. Uh, we do a lot of market study before we start our programs in order to find where are the gaps and where are the areas where we can provide uh, improvement. Our SONAM, or School of Nursing and Midwifery philosophy, is that nursing and midwifery are both an art and a science, and that the person is the focus of nursing and midwifery. So when we come um, to our learning, and teaching and learning um, focus is on you as the student, on you as the learner, but also on you as a professional who is already licensed and working uh, somewhere. We also believe in lifelong learning and a spirit of inquiry are essential to successful practice. Uh, so we ensure that even when you finish, we make sure that you as an alumni uh, still have a place in this university and can be able to develop yourself. Uh, we also make sure that we continue to engage with our nurses where they work. Health is a, a result of a person's interaction with their environment. Uh, so we ensure that we make sure that the environment within which you're learning uh, is an environment that is conducive to supporting your learning, to supporting your practice. Uh, we also believe that collaboration leads to high quality care. So we collaborate both internationally, locally. We collaborate within the nursing profession and with other multidisciplinary professions. Uh, we also con collaborate with uh, anyone that is involved in health uh, within the region of East Africa and beyond. So you can count on us to focus on instructing working nurses and midwives, uh, large scale workforce demand, uh, we have proven uh, in-country retention for the nurses that we train, and we also have proven impact in clinical service and leadership. Um, we also are able to strengthen focus on midwifery-related programs with the new programs that we have started. And of course, we will soon offer masters in advanced uh, practice midwifery as we go along. Our impact in 15 years, uh, we strive to make sure that we do surveys, uh, we do, we go back to our students, we go back to employers, uh, we go back to the community and find out over the last few years where we have been able to train nurses, what do you think has been the outcome? Uh, so in 2016, we did a study across East Africa to find out uh, what has been happening with the nurses once they have trained in our universities. Um, campuses and they have gone back into the community. And the study uh, showed that we have 90% uh, of our nurses have stayed in the region after graduation, that over 60% of our graduates work in the public sector, and those working in clinical positions directly benefit over 2 million people each year. We also found out that over 100 of our graduates are in leadership positions. So many, many of our graduates um, either are in key leadership positions or they are in charges in their wards uh, or they have started uh, to be involved in leadership within uh, their communities. Some of our nurses are working um, in hospitals, they're working in NGOs, they're working uh, in the teaching institutions and they're making an impact out there. Um, some of our alumni, we have a few examples like Stacy Kendi who pioneered the idea of the Machakos Cancer and Research Center. Uh, Stacy did um, oncology and she is also a BA, um, she's also one of our people who help us with clinical uh, practice. We also have Anthony Ndungu who works in Agakani University Hospital um, and he's also been able to publish his, uh, his uh, research work as an undergraduate student and also to present his research uh, in conferences. Uh, we make sure that we keep our alumni um, active. So we have started an alumni association and we alumni are able to meet from time to time uh, to share their views, choose their own leaders and uh, actively participate in our activities. Uh, another alumni we love to show off is Jemima Kimeu with the chief nurse, uh, nursing officer in Agakan University Hospital. Uh, she's also our alumni, one of our pioneer alumni. Uh, we have Lydia Nyachiro, who is working in Kisumu. Uh, we have Eunice McKenna, who is working in Mombasa. Uh, we have Elijah Mwangi, who is a teacher, nurse teacher in Kenyatta National Hospital. Uh, we have George Ogot, who has served for quite some time as chief nursing officer in Pumwani Maternity Hospital. 
Uh, so all these uh, people who encourage us that our work is not in vain and that Aga Khan is a place to go uh, if you want to go out there and be prepared well enough to be able to make an impact. Uh, we've also gone back to our stakeholders from time to time to find out are they okay with how the program is going, are there changes they would like us to make. And some of the comments they have made is alumni are often described by employers as a product of Aga Khan University. That means that people uh, who train in our university can be easily identified in their practice, in the way they think, in the way they uh, encounter, deal with problems that they encounter out there, in the way they interact with the multidisciplinary team and so on. So, oh, there are certain characterizations that you get from Aga Khan University that when you go out there, you can be seen as someone who has come from Aga Khan University with certain uh, capacities that are useful to your organization. Uh, others say that the impact of AKU graduates or the outcomes of the organization, they always add quality commitment uh, to the organization. Others say before we improved our healthcare workers with AKU, we were struggling with our indicators. Um, I had so many fresh steel buds in our, our health facilities, and this is data of, from demographic survey. This was a team in Kuala whom we talked to, um, and because of the skill level that the nurses uh, or our alumni had shown, uh, they were able to help to deal with those problems. And the people in Kuala, this was Kuala in Mombasa, were able to improve uh, their maternal child health indicators because we had, they had the capacity of students or alumni who had been students in Aga Khan University. What do we offer? Uh, currently, within this year, we are offering Post RN Bachelor of Science and Midwifery, uh, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, which is goes for two and a half years. We are also offering post RN Bachelor of Science in Midwifery, which is two and a half years. Uh, we are also uh, advertising for our first class, which is going to do Masters of Science in Advanced Practice Nursing, and this will be a master's program for two years. Uh, so what will you learn? Um, it is always important to share uh, what you will learn. We will start with Bachelor of Science in Midwifery. Uh, so if you come to the Midwifery uh, Bachelor's Program, uh, our expectation or our expected outcome is that you will apply current knowledge from midwifery and other disciplines to care uh, for women and their infants within the family and the community context. You will be able to consult, collaborate and refer appropriately uh, based on evidence-informed knowledge, roles, and responsibilities of other team members. Uh, the other objective is that you will identify social cultural influences of women's health and lives and promote education and social equity to improve women's health outcome. Uh, we also hope you'll be able to apply best practices based on evidence to support psychological uh, labor and birth, physiological labor and birth. Uh, you'll also be able to establish supportive partnerships with women to enable their participation in decisions about them and their infants' health. We also hope that you'll be able to demonstrate a commitment to personal and professional growth by recognizing learning as a lifelong process. And the last one is that you'll be able to adhere established process, professional practice, uh, observing country-specific legal, cultural, and ethical tenets. So our subjects uh, are geared towards meeting uh, those expected learning outcomes of the program. Um, so in the first semester, these are the subjects that you cover. Um, because it is a Bachelor of Science uh, degree, we ensure as per commission of university education requirements uh, that you have covered sciences to the required level. So we start with science subjects. Uh, we also know we are living in times when uh, learning is not 100% face-to-face, so we have blended learning. Um, and so introduction to ICT is important. So you learn um, uh, how to manage your learning either as an online format, uh, how to access information on the internet and so on. So we do have an introduction to ICT. Uh, critical thinking is uh, important for nursing and midwifery. So we ensure that you do academic writing and critical thinking because at uh, bachelor's level and above you're expected uh, to write in the, in the current academic required level. So these subjects in this first semester are the same for all undergraduate uh, programs. 
Then in the second semester, you move to midwifery and you do midwifery, normal childbearing, uh, pathophysiology, hematology, and immunology, pharmacology, and biostatistics. Then in the second year, you continue to add your knowledge in midwifery, so you do complications of childbearing, cycle emergency, and referral. Uh, you also start your research project, uh, so you do your research one. Um, we also do behavioral psychology and counseling, as well as uh, culture, health, and society in midwifery and epidemiology. Uh, in the second semester of year two, we do family planning, newborn complications, uh, health informatics, leadership, and management. Uh, so it is not just teaching you to be a good midwife in terms of skill, uh, but to be a complete health practitioner who understands the culture within which you exist in, uh, who has a scientific basis uh, in order to be able to interpret uh, what you find in your assessments, and also to be able to call, to utilize evidence, to be able to find that evidence in doing research work, and to be able to utilize that uh, evidence to improve your midwifery practice. Uh, we also know that most of our people who do bachelors are also involved in education, both education within practice areas, but also within our diploma schools. Um, so we do education and instruction in midwifery, which is teaching and learning. Um, and it has a clinical or teaching practice component. Uh, we also have an integrated midwifery practicum where you're given uh, enough hours to, to thoroughly uh, improve your skills as a midwife uh, so that when you live with this bachelor's degree, you will be able to uh, be an independent practice uh, practitioner who can be able to give um, high standard of clinical midwifery care. Then we move to Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Again, in the BSc, uh, we do have uh, expected learning outcomes, which are to be able to provide safe uh, patient-centered care, uh, be able to provide ethically and culturally sensitive care for individuals and families and communities, demonstrate leadership, critical thinking, problem-solving skills, uh, work in multidisciplinary uh, teams, advocate and communicate effectively, demonstrate innovation, creativity, and entrepreneurial skills, and provide population-focused care, incorporating health promotion and disease prevention. Uh, so again, you will see the first semester for all our bachelor's programs is the same because you do common science subjects. You also do ICT and academic writing. Uh, then in semester two, you do health assessment, advanced concepts in nursing, pathophysiology, pharmacology, and biostatistics. Uh, then all uh, bachelors of nurses or general nursing programs in Kenya are required uh, by the CUE and Nursing Council uh, that you still do reproductive health nursing. Even if you're not doing midwifery, uh, you have to do a module in reproductive health nursing. So there is um, uh, reproductive health nursing within the general nursing uh, bachelors. We also have behavioral psychology, counseling, child health nursing, uh, research, um, culture, health, and society. Uh, we are KRCHN, so community health nursing is continued, and we still do community health nursing uh, when you're doing your Bachelor of Nursing. Uh, mental health and psychiatric nursing, uh, communicable and vector bone diseases. Uh, teaching and learning, again, is the same that you need to learn how to teach nursing either in a school or within a practice area. Uh, leadership and management, uh, and for uh, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, we do have an elective period when you choose an area where you need to improve practice. Uh, it can be in leadership, it can be in clinical practice, it can be in, co in community health. Uh, this type of electives, you choose a place where you will go work in an area uh, where you will identify something where, that you want to improve in terms of gaps in practice. So those are the programs or how the programs are administered so that you know which areas will you be able to cover in order to graduate either as a BSN or as a BSM. Um, the entry requirements are in our website. If you go to our website, you'll find uh, requirements. And we require an aggregate score of C-plane in either KCE or Division Two in K KCE, uh, C-plane in KCSC. 
or a Division Two in KCE. Of course, you need to have your registered nursing council of Kenya license. So you need to show your practice license. It needs to be uh, current. And of course, you need to be in good standing with the nursing council of Kenya. Uh, minimum, you must have a minimum of two years experience because this is a work study program. We expect that you're practicing as a nurse somewhere or a midwife. Um, and you have at least some experience because we do not start with teaching you how to make beds and how to feed patients. We expect you are already practicing what we are doing uh, is adding on to improve your skills in advanced nursing practice. Uh, you must be a holder in Diploma Kenya Registered Community Health nurse. You need to be a KRCHN uh, or have a KRN, KRM. So you have done KRN and then you have come and done uh, registered midwifery for, uh, from a recognized training institution. Um, how do you apply? You will need to fill out an application form. It is an online form, so if you go to our website, you'll be able to download the form and make the application. Uh, you need uh, to give copies of your certificate. Uh, you need to give a letter of release or recommendation from your current employer. You need photographs, two passport size photographs, and you did a non-refundable application fee of 3,000 Kenya shillings. Um, then we have graduate programs, and the first graduate program that we are starting is Master of Science in Advanced Practice Nursing uh, with a specialty in adult health. Our expected learning outcome is that this advanced nurse practitioner will be an advanced practice uh, person who will be, which will provide primary acute and specialty care across the lifespan or across the life cycle uh, through assessment, uh, diagnosis and treatment of illness and injuries. Um, we also require expert knowledge and complex decision making skills, uh, clinical competences to appropriately respond to 21st century health needs. We also expect the APN nurse is responsible for diagnosing, prescribing, undertaking a wide range of procedures, uh, develop and lead whole services, consulting, making ethical decisions, case management, leadership in delivering safe care uh, to patients and their families. As the Dean has said, uh, we are moving to making sure that universal health care is improved. And one of the biggest gaps is people being able to get advanced care uh, within the primary health environment. So we are plugging that gap uh, to ensure that the APN nurse will work within this area independently. Uh, wherever there is required change or modification in legislation, we are working uh, with the Nursing Council and with the Ministry of Health and with the Commission of University Education uh, to make sure that by the time this APN nurse goes out there in the public to practice, uh, that they have all the legal uh, capacity uh, to be able to practice, to diagnose, to prescribe, um, and to do the whole uh, requirements of their services. We are also working with the nursing council to be able to um, put together the scope of practice uh, so that it is identified what is it that they do and why they do. Um, each patient has a right to receive care based on his or her personal preferences. And so we expect that the APN uh, will do holistic care and maintain the integrity uh, of family and patient. We also expect the APN to effectively and efficiently work with various healthcare settings, um, collaborate with multidisciplinary team to provide highest quality of care. And of course, we expect anyone that passes through the doors of Aga Khan becomes a lifelong learner. Um, expected learning outcomes of the program when you join the APN, um, you will adopt a scientific deliberate approach to advanced nursing practice, integrate advanced skills in communication, critical thinking, translational research, apply advanced practice nursing rules as a practitioner and as a leader. So how will you learn? Um, these are some of the, the subjects that will be learned in the first semester, advanced clinical pathophysiology, uh, advanced clinical pharmacology, theoretical foundations of nursing practice, advanced health assessment and clinical reasoning, philosophical foundations of research, and they will have an advanced practice practicum. Um, we will talk a lot about ethics, especially in the fact that this person is expected to be an independent practitioner. 
uh, diagnostics, therapeutics, uh, biostatistics and epidemiology, and of course, research. Um, teaching and learning in clinical practice, uh, medication management and use. Um, and then we will cover chronic palliative care, trauma, emergency, uh, leadership, um, and of course, how to write your thesis because in the year two, semester two, we expect them to be able to be completing their thesis. Entry requirements, you must be a registered nurse with Nursing Council of Kenya. You must have minimum two years of practice experience after having completed uh, an undergraduate program. So after your BSCN, you must have worked for two years. Uh, you need to have an upper second class honors or cumulative grade point average of three and a four point scale or a lower second class honors or cumulative grade point of average 2.50 and a four-point scale with additional relevant training. For instance, you've done uh, your research, you've done paper presentations, or you have a peer-reviewed uh, publication and relevant working experience. Uh, how do you apply? Well, again, our, home, our application forms are, can be found in our website. Uh, you need to have a passport size photograph. You need to have certified academic transcripts. Uh, you need your registration certificate and practice license from the Nursing Council of Kenya. And of course, you need your uh, certificates for KCSC. Uh, you need to have a certified copy of your bachelor's degree certificate. You need a recommendation letter from your employer. You need your current CV and one page personal statement describing your professional goals for the next five years. You also need copies of work experience letters from your current or previous employers to validate your work experience uh, statement in the application form. Uh, so those are the programs that we are offering. Uh, that is what you expect to learn. Um, but also learning is not just about coming to class, learning and going home. We also ensure that we have a learning environment that is conducive uh, to learning. So we do have a well-stocked modern library uh, well skilled, well equipped clinical skills lab, and we also have a science laboratory. Um, our library also has uh, online access, so you can be able to use the library uh, virtually wherever you are. Uh, we are having a new building coming up, and it's going to have uh, a modern simulation lab, um, which will be used for especially master's programs and undergraduate programs. Um, that's a picture of our classes. Uh, we teach in groups of not more than 40 uh, so that we are able to focus on each student and we do not lose uh, anyone. So it has ample audiovisual links, uh, ample space, lighting, and uh, we ensure that the classes have an environment where you feel comfortable with learning. Our students do field visits. Um, so we ensure within their, some of their subjects that require visits uh, outside the campus, they do visit um, industries, they visit children homes, they visit uh, areas that are related to either community health, uh, mental health, uh, culture health and society, and so on. Um, we have a modern laboratory which is quite new, it's now I think two or three years old. Uh, an ultra modern science lab uh, that is specifically designed for nursing uh, sciences. Uh, what support services do we have that are available to the students? Uh, we do have a scholarship program for students. Uh, we are always seeking to find uh, grants and uh, scholarships uh, from donors and partners uh, in order to reduce the burden of school fees or tuition fees for our students. Um, so, once you are a student, it's important to look for calls for scholarships so that you're able to apply. Uh, some are full, others are partial. It depends on what the person who has given the grant uh, has advised. Uh, those are pictures of our library. And again, once we move to our university center, uh, we will have an ultra modern library. Uh, other extracurricular activities that we have are sports. We do have an annual sports fiesta. Uh, we have a university swimming program where all students are taught how to swim and how to do life saving. Uh, we also have a culture day within our programs. 
and we have established a student council uh, where you have student representatives to look at the affairs of students and become the people who meet with the university in order to discuss important affairs of students and needs. Uh, those are pictures of a sports day. Uh, we do have another Khan Sports Club nearby where we utilize those facilities. Uh, these are the adverts which are out, and like the Dean said, uh, the advert closes on June 29th, and we have extended it all the way from March in order to be able to enable as many people as possible to apply. Um, the university will accept provisional applications from candidates who may have documents pending. We know the problems that people are going through uh, in this time of COVID, so we've given you ample time to be able to look for your transcripts, uh, if you have any challenges, don't refuse to apply. Make a provisional application and follow up with the people who are assisting with application process uh, in order to be able to uh, discuss your issues and your problems and where we can be able to help, we will help. Um, so all such applications will be evaluated for admission on a provisional basis. So we're looking at everyone as an individual because we are all having uh, different challenges. Some of us have been locked in here in Nairobi probably traveling to a, a place where you went for school that's outside Nairobi may be difficult and so on. Uh, the process to process an application for final selection applicants will be required to submit their pending documents in accordance uh, with minimum eligibility requirements. So we still will expect those documents to be in uh, in order for you to be able to start the program. Uh, we will do interviews. We are hoping once we close within July, we can be able to contact you when to come uh, or to do an interview, depending on how situation will be. If uh, the government still wants people not to have meetings and people not to meet in groups, uh, then we can look for an option of how to do uh, those interviews virtually or any other means that we can be able to do. So we will still do interviews. We are still on track to start the program in the next semester. Um, so the interviews expect you to demonstrate good communication skills, leadership abilities, commitment to the nursing profession, uh, midwifery and nursing knowledge and skills appropriate for the study. So we do do interviews. We talk to you. Uh, we learn about you. We learn why you do want uh, to be involved in our programs, what do you expect uh, to gain from them, and so on. Uh, so for further details, please go to our website. You can also call those numbers on the screen. Um, and the School of Nursing and Midwifery in Nairobi, Kenya is located in Sandy Plaza, Wangapara Road, on 4th Parkland Avenue. Um, so if you would be able to come personally, you can also pop in and find who can get some assistance. Uh, that is our future. That is our new uh, university building that we are building opposite Aga Khan University Hospital. Uh, it's almost finished. It's just that with these COVID uh, complications, <laughs> it might take uh, slightly longer, but we hope by next year we will be able to have moved into the new building. Um, so we look forward to that. Most of you will be the first students to move into that new building. Um, so yeah, looking forward to that. Uh, this is how we look during our convocation. Uh, we have very unique gowns. Uh, <laughs> in that we always have graduation. We have started to be having graduation dinners for our students uh, who are graduating and our alumni. Um, so we are open for question and answers. Um, I think after Joseph has presented. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, uh, Isabel, for uh, the presentation for uh, Aga Khan University, Nairobi. So we will go over to Uganda uh, to have a presentation from Joseph, uh, who will present on behalf of the uh, School of Nursing in Uganda. Joseph, over to you if you can hear me. So, uh, yes. while, Joseph is, while Joseph is uploading his uh, presentation, Eunice would like to give uh, an invitation. Okay, so um, I just want to appreciate everybody who's continued joining the session, and in particular, Dr. Connie Moravi, who used to be the <coughs> academic head uh, in uh, Sona, <coughs> Kenya, you. some years back. Thank you for joining us. We, we acknowledge your presence. Thank you. Over to you, Joseph. Okay, thank you. 
Dr. Eunice Indirango, our Dean for the School of Nursing and Midwifery in East Africa. Uh, this is Joseph Mwizerwa. I am the academic head for the School of Nursing and Midwifery here in Uganda, situated in uh, Kampala, the capital, on uh, Gaddafi Road, or also normally and often called the uh, Old Market Hill Road. It's a, a place that is well known for Aga Khan education institutions and we are just adjacent to the Aga Khan Education Services, which is the primary school and high school. Uh, with me is uh, Gladys Mogera, who is also our uh, assistant registrar and who gives us support to uh, students when they start their journey into the university. Uh, just before we go into the details of the presentations, I will pull off my mask and they put on my video so you can see who is talking on the other end. And for me, it's the graduates of those people who are in Uganda or who have to join the Uganda program. So this, okay, I will I, I, remove my video and then we, could, we will continue with the presentation. Uh, I wish to welcome you to uh, our open day to deliberate on a number of issues. And I wish to thank you, especially prospective students who, uh, who have expressed interest to join our programs and have responded to our advertised call that went out in January of uh, 2020. And uh, it has been a long wait. Normally, by this time, you would have received the admission offers. But uh, until now, those processes have not yet started because of what we all know, which is the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And we know that many of you are probably frontline workers, and we empathize with you for the challenges that uh, you are going through, and we are all together with you. I wish to thank you for joining our call and uh, also thank our alumni and the uh, uh, current students who are also on the call. And I'm aware that also uh, our staff and faculty are also online so that they can support you later when we have uh, uh, questions and answers. Uh, I will not repeat everything that uh, my colleague uh, Isabel has uh, shared. Uh, Isabel has taken us through a good detail of uh, what Aga Khan University School of Nursing and Midwifery in East Africa is and the various programs and programs, program durations, what we expect to learn and a number of other things. Uh, but I will not uh, go into much of that detail, but let me cover another angle to that and quickly take you through what Aga Khan University is. Aga Khan University is a, a member of a big family, which is the Aga Khan Development Network. And the, the Aga Khan Development Network uh, has uh, three arms, but uh, the university is uh, situated in the middle arm, if you are able to see on the presentation where the green is, that is the Aga Khan University, and we belong to the social development arm. Uh, the Aga Khan Development Network is, a, if you would call it a big family, but it's a group of private non-denominational social development institutions that work in quite a number of uh, developing countries, 13 number and employ about uh, and over 77,000 staff and volunteers. Uh, my colleague Isabel has uh, elaborated on our missions and values. But let me just reiterate that uh, the Aga Khan University and the School of Nursing and Midwifery look forward to supporting, building human capacity, empowering people to be able to go out and solve uh, problems that exist within their society. Uh, there are a number of schools in the Aga Khan University and the School of Nursing and Midwifery where some of you have applied to study or where some of you already studied if you're an alumni and where some of you are currently studying, if you're current student, is only one of the many schools that uh, the university runs. There's also a medical college, an institute of educational development, 
an institute of the study of uh, Muslim civilizations that is situated in the UK. Uh, this is the Aga Khan University Examinations Board that is in Pakistan, the Faculty of Arts and Sciences, and then the Aga Khan University Hospitals. And depending on where you are, you probably have interfaced with some of the hospitals as well. Uh, the university is situated in, in uh, has teaching sites in eight uh, countries. Uh, although it is situated in, uh, it is situated in eight countries, but has uh, uh, teaching sites in 11 different uh, uh, places. Uh, for the subject today, which is the School of Nursing and Midwifery in East Africa, the schools are situated in Uganda and Kenya and Tanzania, which are, are the old states of the ESC. Uh, our guiding principles are quality, relevance, impact, and accessibility. And for each of them, we walk them to the detail. We ensure, for example, for quality, that everything that we venture into has to be done to the best that is resourcefully and humanly and practically possible for us. And we want to, as much as possible, to stay relevant and be able to be impactful as well. We also ensure that as much as possible, we are accessible, uh, depending on where you are located and which school you have been going to. You might have uh, a hard that uh, uh, tuition is uh, an expectation when you join programs. But at Aga Khan University, we want to believe that uh, we invest to make sure that we are accessible beyond the limitations of tuition. And I, Isabel has gone to great detail to share and break down some of the avenues that we use to make that accessibility value uh, practical. Uh, if I talk a bit about Uganda, we are a school of nursing and midwifery that started uh, well in 2000. Um, at that time, when we started in 2000, we were known as the Advanced Nursing Studies Program, but later in 2014, we became the School of Nursing and Midwifery when we took on additional programs in midwifery particularly. Uh, we are a campus that is regulated by uh, the National Education Regulator. In Uganda, we call that the National Council of Higher Education. And because we run professional programs, we are also regulated by the Uganda Nurses and Midwives Council. And we do our uh, uh, reporting also to different line ministries, that's the Minister of Health and Minister of Education and Sports. And we do collaborate with a number of both national and international organizations. The international organizations, Isabel has broken down uh, many of them, but uh, for us, the national ones, and most importantly, the professional organization ones that we collaborate with include the Uganda Nurses and Midwives Union and Association, the Uganda Private Midwives Association, the Nurses and Midwives Association of Uganda, and the Associate, Association of Graduate Nurses and Midwives of Uganda. Uh, we ensure that at least our students are able to understand the uh, various uh, opportunities that are available in the market even before they leave the program. But it is good to know that uh, the students uh, in our programs do work and study at the same time. The programs that we run, Isabel has done a good breakdown of them. I will not go into their details, but we run a model at the moment that is called the work study program that allows nurses and midwives to work and study at the same time. We know of the limitations that uh, derail many nurses to continue on their academic advancement uh, trajectory. So this program was constructed uh, intentionally to make sure that you can continue to be supported to grow in your career and uh, work at the same time. Uh, the programs that we run in Uganda, uh, similar to what uh, Isabel has indicated, but we have an additional one, which is the EN to RN program, which is the general diploma in nursing. And the rest of the programs, are, as Isabel has indicated. And yes, the programs are instructed in a way that is as student friendly as possible. And on the right, you can see some of the uh, teaching uh, facilities that we use. This is the session that is running. This is Professor Grace uh, instructing the different midwifery students 
and down we also run CPDs, which is a professional development courses to different uh, uh, institutions that may have a need for them. And we do run these uh, at no cost to the, uh, benef to the beneficiaries while we meet the cost together with the, uh, one of our international partners. And this was a, an infection control program that was running as a CPD on our campus uh, just even before the Corona-19 uh, pandemic started. And we have various teaching sites. Uh, the, most of our theories in Kampala are done on uh, a campus, which is uh, usually uh, the theory classes, assessments, uh, and then the clinicals, we go to uh, our neighboring hospitals. Most of them are national referral hospitals. We have Mulago, which is the national referral hospital. We have Sawempe, which is the or National Referral Hospital for uh, Maternal and Child Health Services. Uh, we have Kirudu National Referral Hospital, which is the, uh, the Medical National Referral Hospital, and then the Botavica Hospital, which is the, the uh, Mental Health Hospital. The other learning facilities that we use are skills labs, which are our labs which are on campus. We have a skills lab, a science lab, and the an ICT lab on campus. And then for community, we have various community uh, places that we visit. And these are all within a radius of about five to 15 kilometers. However, the school provides the uh, uh, transport to be able to take students to all the facilities that we uh, use for learning purposes, be it the clinical placements, be it the community placements, or any other primary health post that we may use. The pedagogies that you can expect to go through when you enroll into uh, our programs are quite student friendly, student uh, engaging. Uh, we know that uh, many of our students are. Uh, come to school when they are from work and they, they have on their mind a number of things related, relating to their family or relating to their workplace or any other uh, things that may be uh, in their lives. Because we know that our students are not necessarily the traditional students who come from high school. They are usually either mothers or fathers, parents somewhere, they are parenting, they are working, and now they seek to grow in their career. So, we ensure that we have small numbers in our schools and we spend the resources that we have to maximum to ensure that we can engage them and make their learning experience in our campuses as best as possible. You can expect that you'll also introduced to, you'll be introduced to online learning uh, in various forms. We use a model learning platform, which is an interactive one. You, and it offers an opportunity for you to even engage with our academic staff and faculty even beyond the uh, eight to five time when you would be on campus. For example, you could be on a weekend or a non-study day back at your workplace or home, and you can still engage with our faculty and continue the learning. Uh, so learning is not limited to uh, the four walls of the classroom or even to the campus's infrastructure. You could continue learning uh, wherever you are and be in touch with our faculty. Uh, some of our supported departments, we have various uh, departments that support learning. Uh, Isabel did talk about two libraries. Yes, we also have a library here. You can see the picture, top left quadrant. Uh, that is part of our library. Uh, to the right top right quadrant, you can see one of our skills lab. We have two skills labs, one for midwifery and another one for general nursing. And the, the bottom, you can see bottom right quadrant, you can see one of our reading and study spaces. And to the left, you can see uh, part of our classrooms, uh, the storage building, the upper part is uh, some of our classrooms. Uh, you, when you finally join our programs, and we pray that you will finally join our programs when uh, this COVID-19 ends or when a new normal situation comes up, uh, you will join a great world and team of uh, 
alumni who have demonstrated uh, the competencies that they have learned in our programs and taken them and they have been able to create various things. And the, I, I share particularly this one. Uh, Deborah Gita is one of our alumni in our early years. Uh, joined the program around 2003 and finished around 2005-06. But she was able to exit the program and go and change uh, a number of things in her own career. She was employed at a, an HIV uh, child hospital, but uh, was able to ingeniously observe challenges that were in her society and resigned her job and went to solve challenges in her society to take care of abandoned children, children who were having various uh, abnormalities or developmental issues that had been rejected by their own families and communities and should take them up and look after them. And she was able to use initial health resources but has been able to uh, touch base with the various uh, support institutions to be able to now run a, a, an institution that cares for those children that the, uh, the community has found challenging to look after. And she takes on that mantle and looks after them and they are able even to go through a school which has uh, been able to run and then is able to see these young uh, children grow into useful adults and uh, wonderful citizens. So when you come into the program, you can expect that the program will shift your thinking, but in a good way, so that you can take on challenges that exist in our society and be able to handle them uh, appropriately. So we are proud to say that our alumni are, are out, able to go out there and, uh, and challenge the status quo and be able to change uh, or innovate and bring new changes uh, in that society. Uh, we also are planning some future programs. Uh, we hope that uh, uh, over the years, the programs we have run, we'll be adding another uh, level of uh, programs. Most of our programs until today are targeting people who are already nurses and midwives. And we hope uh, in the near future we'll start a generic program uh, that uh, will take uh, candidates straight from high school uh, or secondary school and uh, be able to go through our four-year program and then complete and register as a, uh, a professional nurse or midwife. Uh, this is a tied to uh, our completion of a new academic building that we are building for those who are in Uganda. This is situated in Nakawa, opposite uh, MOOBS, which is the Makerere Business Institute, Makerere Business School, and also near uh, Capital Shopper Supermarket on that old Port Bay Road. Uh, we also hope that uh, in the near future, we will be able to uh, start a uh, Master of Science in Nursing and or midwifery. Uh, that is also tied to completion of our new uh, building. Uh, in summary, and I want to wind up, I want to indicate that we stand for quality in nursing and midwifery education, a good student experience, well-structured curriculum that will fit into your program such that you can continue to work and study at the same time. Uh, we also stand for teaching quality, high, uh, highly qualified teachers in nursing and midwifery are really here. Most of our faculty are either masters or PhD prepared, and many of them who are masters prepared are actually now also uh, taking on the challenge to do their PhD and be able to finish in the very near future. And many of them are also certified as nurse educators through our uh, national college that certifies nurse educators. So when I say that our uh, teaching staff is uh, good and highly qualified, I really mean it. We, uh, we the university championed, uh, championed a new uh, uh, op opportunity for us to always challenge our teaching style to be student-centered as much as possible. And I can guarantee you that when you join our programs, you will be able to enjoy a friendly environment with our teachers. Uh, on the right, you'll be able to see some of the infrastructure that we 
have on campus. Uh, on top uh, right, that is uh, one of our uh, classrooms. And yes, the classroom arrangement is as conducive as possible. You could go in one and in small groups, you could go another, they are sitting in conference style, you go to another. So it is as the class will find appropriate and fit and engage them and create room that gives them the comfort and convenience to learn. Uh, below you will see our midi free, uh, our midi free skills lab, and to the bottom, this is our general nursing skills lab. And this is infrastructure that's waiting for you, and we will be happy to uh, interact with you when one day uh, you join the program. As I went up, I wanted to indicate that although we mean business to the very every inch, uh, the journey is enjoyable and not scary. And it is very possible that you can complete this journey and complete it in time. I wish to thank you uh, for listening. But going forward, we continue to carefully watch and follow government directives on this COVID-19 pandemic. We will keep you updated when we get developments from the government on how education institutions will reopen. Otherwise, in the meantime, admissions remain open until June 29, 2020. And if you or your colleague needs help, we are more than happy to give you the support if you can get in touch with us through our various platforms. I wish now to end here and say thank you for listening. And I will hand over to Mandela to moderate the rest of the session. Thank you, and over to you, Mandela. Thank you, Joseph, for the wonderful presentation from Uganda. So I would like to hand over to Lillian, who is our student at uh, Sonam, Kenya. Lillian is also a member of the Student Council uh, for Aga Khan University, Kenya. So Lillian, if you can hear me, over to you. Yes, I can hear you. Thank you very much. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Lillian Emojo. I'm currently a student at Aga Khan University, Nairobi, and I'm taking a BSCN uh, course. My year of graduation is 2021, June, that is next year. I'm currently a Kenya registered uh, community health nurse, and I work in Kenyatta National Hospital. I work in the critical care department and um, I really hope um, that by, by the time I complete my course next year that I'll be a better person. So my experience while working and trying to balance between school and, and also between being a student and working as an employee, um, usually it's it initially it used to be quite a bit challenging because um, as a student currently, there's a lot that you need to give as a student. You're required to do your part as a student. And um, I really thank God for the faculty in, in AKU. They are very, very supportive. And um, they have made this, this, this blended program very, 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 easy to maneuver around given the, the, the circumstances that each and every student has during their day-to-day -day activities as they work as well. And um, on, on, if I can talk about the faculty and the learning experience, we have a very good team of faculty and um, for, for, for the respective courses that they, are normally, that they normally take us through, the faculty have been very supportive. And, it's not not only during our class, maybe our class interactions, but also outside our class interactions as well. Because we normally have our faculty advisory meetings where we also get to interact with our faculty. We also we also we are also able to to give our concerns to the faculty and Although it's a requirement by the, by, the, by the institution of AKU for us to have our faculty advisory meeting during the beginning of the semester, during the mid-semester, and also at the end of the semester, I also think it, it's, it was a very good idea for the, for the university to, to start that because there are those students who may not necessarily be able to come outright and, 
and convey their concerns about their 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 experience in the school, maybe from a class perspective, but individually it creates it creates a comfortable environment for the student to be able to tell their faculty advisor what is troubling them. I remember my first meeting with my faculty advisor and I had concerns and it was about how to maneuver around school and work, but my faculty advisor gave me um, gave me tips and pointers on actually how to go about it. And I really thank her very much because it helped me get through my first semester. And because during our first semester, there's, there's a lot of, of work that you have to put in as a student as well. But I was able to come out of that semester and I was actually happy with my grades at the end of that. Also, access to our faculties is not as, as complicated as one would, would, would maybe assume it would be. Because for you, you you can you can um, you can talk to your faculty advisor any other time within the time that is stipulated by the university, and they are always a meeting away. You can always have have uh, our administrator organize for a meeting for you, and they will always create time, um, unless maybe they are not within the the the, the institution, but every meeting with you has always been able to to get that. And I, I really I really want to congratulate the, the institution for that because support to the students personally as a student, support to us is what has really made us really enjoy our stay at AKU currently. And also the availability of resources. If there's one thing I value so much about AKU is the fact that there is a lot of resources one can one can get on anything and everything, not only from the faculty. The library is up to date. The databases that the, the, the school network is able to give access to students, there are so many. I think in AKU, if, if you don't get, if you don't get um, what you're looking for, probably it does not exist, but they try as much as possible. And if you go to our library right now, you wouldn't miss anything. And for a student to be able to get the best of the best, to be able to get resources, like all types of resources that you require, I think that that, that is the best thing any student could ever ask for um, from, from an institution that you. And um, also, we also have, we uh, personally have managed to be involved in a few extracurricular activities that are being offered by AKU. Um, there are swimming lessons that we were even able, we were asked to actually take part in. See, this is this was a this was a university initiative, and we were so excited. And so, you know, as a student, there are some there are some activities you didn't expect a university to be involved in. But I I, I really appreciate AKU for for putting such activities into part of our of our learning experience. Because honestly, there are adults who still don't know how to swim, but AKU is making it so easy for you to be to be normal and to be to be human and to also participate in certain things. Uh, as mentioned before, we have our alumni events and the dinners. I was privileged to attend one, and it was such a colorful event. I was able to interact with so many alumni, and um, I'm so pleased to be part of AKU because majority of our alumni are actually been very very good and they are making a difference out there. Like the hospital in St. Francis, one of the, the heads there is an alumni in, from AKU, and I was so happy to be associated with AKU. And you can see what the university is doing to, to, to the people that have passed through their hands. And I really want to congratulate AKU for that. As a student, I really hope one day that when I'll become an alumni, I'll bring back something and attribute it to AKU. That would be something that I really appreciate. Um, we recently um, had our student council, um, uh, a student council meeting and preparations for it to actually take full, 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 um, for it to be fully operational. Um, I'm pleased to be current, serving as the um, as the acting vice president of the student association, 
and I I was happy to to learn more about our university as EKU and being part of 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 the team that was that was drafting and uh, giving ideas about how students would benefit from from the students association I saw how how much the institution values its students it's it's not all about AKU but it's also about AKU and who AKU is and how AKU is represented out there and it can only be through their students so it was such an interesting um it was such an interesting activity and I learned that if 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 you doubt that AKU values its students, I can tell you for free and not because I'm just uh, the vice president of the council, but it's to him because of its students. And um, there, are lot, there are a lot of concerns about how students in AKU manage to study and not probably be kicked out of school because you are unable to give um, maybe pay school fees and everything. But I would like to disregard that notion because AU has has tried as much as possible, better than I'm saying this because um, I can only speak for AKU. But AKU is giving students so many opportunities for them to be able to study, even through support. We have our J and J. Our J and J scholarships that are normally given to every student. Any student um, who applies has has got a chance of of getting support from our J and J scholarships. We also have our merit based scholarships. Um, for for those who are aware of how our scholarships uh, are normally given, our merit based is is purely dependent on how good of a student you are, of which any student can can be good. If, if, if the credit, um, the merit-based um, scholarship is given to every student who's done well, I think that is that is still a good thing. And also, we the school also has a provision as to how students can make um, can make payments to to the institution. You only need to to have, have to talk to to the persons involved. And AKU has never shut its doors to any student regarding monetary issues. There's always a plan that can be worked out by, by the student and the institution. No student has ever been either kicked out of a class because they have not paid school fees or they were unable to or they were unable to do an exam because of the same. Because there are so many there are so many ways AKU has enabled or rather has given students an opportunity to be able to study. And I really appreciate that about AKU. And also, my learning experience as an individual in AKU, it, from the time I started my, my, my university degree in AKU last year, I can honestly say I am a better person right now, individually and professionally. And my scope of thought has greatly improved I now think, what what can I do that can make an impact in the world? Before then, speaking uh, about myself, before then I would think of maybe things that will only benefit me or the people around me. But given an opportunity to be in AKU, I have realized there's so much more an individual can do that can greatly impact your community. It can greatly impact. It can greatly impact your 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 country and even your region, and generally globally as as um, as well. So there's a lot that I've benefited from AKU, and I really hope and pray that one day I'll be able to 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 come back and actually say. All this I can attribute it to AKU. Yeah, I th I think that's what I had to say about 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 AKU and how being a student there has really impacted uh, my life. Yeah. Thank you very much, Lillian. Uh, I've got a chance to meet Lillian during the formation of the student council, and she's 
uh, such a passionate pers uh, person when it comes to matters of healthcare. So just uh, a recap before we go to the last presenter. Uh, we, for people who have joined us lately, uh, we started the session by having opening remarks from our dean, uh, Dr. Yunis Birangu, who is also the chair of the Nursing Council uh, Kenya. And then we had a presentation from Isabel Campo, who is the academic head uh, Kenya. And then we went uh, to Uganda, where we had a presentation from the academic head Uganda, Joseph. And then now we just had uh, Lillian speaking uh, on behalf of the students. We will go to the alumni. Uh, we have the president who is online, uh, the president of the alumni, uh, Jotam Ireri. If Jotam, you can hear me, uh, please take over. Hello, Jotam, can you hear me? Yes, I can, I can hear you. Okay, can you over hear me to now? you. Yes. Can you hear me now? Now I'm saying uh, good, mo good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Jotam Ireri, as you've already heard from uh, Chris Mandela. I'm an alumni, I'm the chairman, I'm the president of the Alumni Association uh, School of Nursing. Uh, we Previously, didn't have an alumni, and we've already organized one where we are trying to also form a whole university uh, uh, association, alumni association. And when I talk about the whole university, I'm talking about the School of Medicine, uh, the School of Nursing, and the School of Journalizing coming in together and forming one big uh, alumni association that is going to be registered uh, with the government. Okay, some of the activities that we do in uh, in our alumni meetings is uh, dinners where we have speakers from uh, different fields and we do home visits which uh, some had been in progress of plans but due to the COVID-19 they've been put on hold as you know most of the activities of the university have been put off on hold. Uh, so what are some of the benefits that would benefit uh, the alumni you and and who qualifies to be an alumni? The person who qualifies to be an alumni is somebody who has gone through the School of, uh, of Nursing and Midwifery in the Akan University and has completed uh, the training, okay, and has, and has graduated. So meaning that uh, everyone who has been through this process has, is a qualified member. The only thing that they need to do is just start take part in the activities that are coming forth. I know there's a plan to have a big meeting for, for all the, the alumni God willing, if these COVID-19 things uh, settle down uh, towards the end of the year. Benefits that uh, we get from being an alumni or having an acquisition is networking. You're able to get networks for different things, for business, for work, for help, for in job-related fields, from, from your colleagues that you're able to have a common group. And getting together and getting to educate one another are some also the things that we we, we get to have as a benefit for, for this for this cost. Uh, helping in the community and also trying to at times fundraise for, for various activities that the university may put across. So I'd encourage everyone to join in as an alumni, get registered, get to know what is happening with us. We have constitutions that we've been forming for the bigger alumni that have been shared in different groups. We wish to still continue getting uh, different views for different uh, people so that you can be able to form a constitution that will be valid and useful for us. So with those few remarks, I would wish to issue a lovely afternoon and please uh, continue pulling together as alumni of uh, the university. Thank you. Back to you, Mandela. Uh, thank you, Jotam, uh, for the short and precise uh, presentation from the alumni department. Uh, uh, just to let you know that uh, if you have done any academic program and graduated from Aga Khan University, you qualify to be an alumni. And there is so much uh, plans uh, that are underway uh, in terms of our alumni. So we will go to the last session, which is the question and the answer. So you will allow me to first uh, uh, go through the questions that have been posted in the chat. But uh, after I'm done with that, then maybe we can uh, have some people if they have can do audio questions. But uh, 
let me start with the ones that have already been sent to us. So uh, people who will be answering these questions are Isabel, the academic head Kenya, and Joseph, the academic head Uganda. And we also have the registrar's office on standby in case the questions will be uh, majorly dealing with admission. So the, I will be um, uh, saying three questions, then I will hand over to either Isabel or Joseph to answer. Uh, Isabel, if you can hear me and Joseph. Yes, we can hear you. Yes, I can also hear you. Okay, so the first question that I've noted down is, uh, when are the programs uh, starting? And uh, for people who had applied for the, for the midwifery scholarships, uh, when are they getting communication? This to Isabel and also, uh, can someone transfer their units uh, from a different university and join our university? And uh, uh, the last one for the first part is, can an alumni have access to our library services, uh, either physically or online? Over to you, Isabel. Okay, uh, you've read the questions too fast. Uh, the first question was on when students are coming back. Please read the question again. Okay, when are, uh, are the programs starting for the ones who have applied? And okay. uh, on the same, for people who uh, had applied for the midwifery scholarships, when do they expect to hear communication? All right, uh, thank you for the question. So we, when the government gave a directive that we stop face-to-face -face learning, uh, we had already um, an existing blended learning program where you do face-to-face -face and online. Um, so we immediately moved to full-time online learning, which we have continued until we closed school uh, in June 1st. Uh, so we are watching to hear what the government will say in terms of face-to-face -face learning, uh, but that should not interfere with uh, current ongoing programs. If uh, we find that the government is still unable uh, to open schools for face-to-face -face learning, uh, we will call the students back and continue with online learning. Uh, there was also a concern about clinical practice because uh, we still have clinical practice for the, the previous semester. Uh, we are beginning to discuss on how we can be able to do that, either allow students to do their clinical practice where they are or a nearby hospital institution where they are. Uh, and we can discuss that with the nursing council so that we're able to make sure that as the year goes into next year, if face-to-face uh, -face learning has been not been started until maybe uh, October or November, then you don't miss on so much of the clinical practice. Uh, so our intention is to make sure that you continue with learning. Uh, those who need to graduate at the end of the year, we ensure that you have graduated and you have managed uh, to complete within that time and you have been able to cover uh, all that you need to cover. Uh, the other question was about midwifery uh, scholarships. We have um, scholarships that were given by Elma, uh, Donna, a donor called Elma, uh, and they are working with Kenya, the Kenya Pediatric Association. So they give fellowships uh, to nurses and doctors. Um, so these scholarships were given to people who have been endorsed by their counties. Uh, each county gets one scholarship and we have a total of 30 scholarships. Um, so the scholarships that have been given, the counties uh, have been informed, uh, or rather the Council of Governors met and endorsed the first group of uh, nurses uh, or midwives who are supposed to get the scholarships. Uh, and I believe they have been informed um, and the plans are underway to ensure that they uh, continue with the scholarship. Uh, for those who have applied to receive the scholarships, again, we are waiting for the Council of Governors to verify uh, the application forms that were made um, so that they're able to verify that the approval you got from your county was uh, correct. Uh, once we do that, then the Kenya Pediatric Association will be able to, uh, to give us the list uh, of those who are to receive scholarships. Um, there was another question. Uh, there... can, can someone transfer their units if they are learning from uh, in a different university and join a, a SONAM? Uh, I don't know whether we have any registrar who can answer that. Asha or Stanley? I, I can uh, 
uh, participate to answer that, Isabel, if you allow me. Okay. Yes, Joseph. Uh, thank you, Isabel. Um, there was a drive in the early 2000s to allow interconnectivity for students to move from institution one to institution two if there were circumstances that necessitated so. Uh, following that, initially it was a, a, a policy that was crafted by Inter-University Council of South Africa, and then the national councils were to take it up after that. And uh, we know that uh, uh, it has not yet been finalized, but uh, there has been work on it. Uh, different ESC states at different levels, but I can speak for Uganda, that uh, it has been left to every institution to make that decision how it runs. However, uh, there is a general guidance that uh, the student uh, seeking to join another institution should be uh, looking at doing three quarters of their study in the new institution that they are joining, which will be the awarding institution. So for us, where our programs are still short, it may be difficult to uh, find an institution that uh, we can collaborate with, that can allow our students to join uh, into theirs, because the structure of the curriculum is slightly different, because of our nature of the work and study program. So for now, it's not possible, but we are optimistic that uh, because the policy framework is available, in the future, it may be possible. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Joseph. And then the next question. Uh, uh, Mandela. Yes. Before we go to the next question, there is um, some questions that were asked that uh, Dr. Inis Miranda would like to comment on regarding scope of practice uh, and the collaborations. Okay. Okay, thanks everyone. So I'm answering uh, three related questions. There is one about recognition of the APN program by the Nursing Council. There's one about scope of practice and there's one about autonomy. So um, to begin with, the the scopes of practice, the nursing council is working on scopes of practice for the BSN and the diploma uh, level. And um, as, as the School of Nursing and Midwifery, having started this as an inaugural program, we've been able to secure funding from Johnson & Johnson for a project we are calling the nursing platform. You will attest that um, the issue of autonomy and the scope of practice is not a one entity, um, it's not a one entity action, it's a multi-entity action. So this particular grant is going to bring together the Ministry of Health, the Nursing Council of Kenya, the associations, and the Public Service Commission with the aim of making sure that we not only develop a scope of practice for the master's level, that's the advanced practice nursing, but also we look at the issue of the scheme of service and the nursing policy. So this uh, particular uh, grant has been approved and will commence its implementation in uh, Ju July, August of this year. Um, in terms of um, looking at uh, whether the program is recognized by the Nursing Council, indeed it is. The program has been, a, has been submitted to the Nursing Council for approval, and it was also submitted to the Commission of University Education for approval. So this is a program that is recognized and approved. And in addition to that, uh, with the scope of practice being developed, it means that the, by the time the nurses graduate from the program, the environment will be ready for them. Uh, for those who are from Kenya, you'll attest the fact that once you finish your bachelor's, there's usually no regulation of the master's uh, level of education, whatever master's program you do. So that is something that will help sort that issue out. I think those are the two main questions. And then there's somebody asking when the APN program will start. The program for the advanced practice nursing, the advertisement has been out. Uh, the advert will close in two weeks with the intent of starting the program uh, in October. And we will continue with the admission process uh, via the online technology so that the semester can start um, this year as, as planned. Thank you. So thank you, uh, Dr. Eunice. Uh, so the next question is, uh, uh, can our alumni access our library services, both physically and maybe online? So far, so far, our alumni have been able to access the library online. 
I mean, uh, physically, and a number of them, I do meet them coming to use our library services. The only component we need to clarify is the uh, ability to access the, the service online, and that is something we can work with the, with the librarian, uh, with the chief librarian to sort out. So Mandela, I believe we can follow up with Peter and be able to communicate. Otherwise, for physical access that has been uh, available, and please do feel free to use that service. As we move to the university center, the library space will even be larger, so you're very welcome to use the space. Otherwise, we'll get back to you on the, uh, on the possibility of using the online service. Thank you. Thank you. And then uh, there is a question also on uh, practical experience in midwifery. Can one practice in their hospital since it, uh, it is a high volume capacity? Oh, okay, thank you for the question. Um, I know most of the people uh, feel that they can be able to do their clinical practice in the hospitals where they work. Uh, because they do have the facilities, uh, but we work within the regulatory framework. Um, and in Kenya for nursing and midwifery programs, you can only do clinicals in a hospital that has been approved as a teaching uh, hospital. Uh, so nursing council has to look at the hospital and approve it to give clinical teaching uh, for nursing. Uh, however, if you feel that where you work, there are enough facilities, uh, you can be able to talk to us and we can negotiate with the nursing council to come to your hospital or to your area of practice, uh, assess it for teaching and learning, uh, and be able to approve it. Um, we also have, uh, each institution has the hospitals or teaching and learning uh, institutions that it is approved for. Um, so one of the things we would like to negotiate with the nursing council is that instead of us having just a list of specific areas, can we go to any uh, hospital that is approved, whether we have asked the nursing council to investigate it or not. Um, but regarding unsupervised, we have some hours of unsupervised clinical experience. Uh, that one has no limit. You're able to do your unsupervised clinical experience where you work or a hospital uh, nearby. However, I must say that COVID has brought us, the COVID crisis has brought uh, different experiences and new lessons to learn. And I'm sure um, the way we do our clinical experience will probably uh, be easier to modify after this COVID crisis because of the experiences that we have had that have shown us uh, that that rigid process that we've always had can be changed, can be modified to make learning easier. I hope I've answered the question. Okay, thank you. Uh, we also have a question from uh, one of our alumni, uh, Lucia Buyanza, I think the class of 2008. Uh, she's asking if she can be able to share the curriculum for midwifery uh, in Southern Sudan. I think she, it's, she's a member of the Nursing and Midwifery Council. Uh, uh, in Sudan. Um, let her talk to the dean. Let the dean. <laughs> yeah, indeed, indeed. Uh, the School of Nursing works well in terms of collaborating with with uh, other partners, including the regulators. And we do know that uh, South Sudan has been working hard to build its infrastructure. So I would encourage Lucia to to get in touch with uh, Isabel directly, and we'll have a conversation, and uh, we'll provide the various uh, guidance and mentorship where needed. So we are always happy to collaborate and build capacity across the region. So by all means, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think someone has also asked about uh, feedback. So we have said we will be able to give feedback immediately after we close our application window, which is uh, uh, ending on 29th of June. And then uh, uh, someone has asked, when do we expect uh, advertisement for application for the next intake? That's uh, next year, 2021. Um, so the advertisements will depend on the program. So we usually have uh, in uh, Uganda, we have one admission that is in, starts in August. So usually for that uh, admission, the adverts tend to go out uh, January of each year. For Kenya, we've been having double admissions. So for the February intake, the adverts have been ordinarily going out in September. So when we, what, depending on how the COVID situation uh, evolves, we may have our February intake in uh, Kenya. So for that, they expect the adverts to go out uh, towards the end of uh, July. I think it is between July and September. 
However, for the master's program, please note there will only be one admission in a year, and that admission will be uh, August of each year. Therefore, the next admission cycle, the adverts will go out at the beginning of 2021. One. Yes. Um, Mandela, one question that we need to address is there somebody asking about those who are in session, when do they resume school? So, um, and Isabel had addressed this largely, but you, we will have to, it will depend largely on the government directives. However, we are exploring for the case of Kenya, the opportunity of completing the exams online. And we will communicate to the students in good time when that uh, becomes sorted. And then you'll also note that we, you, you have to do the clinical practice components for the semester to be sufficiently completed. So once we are able to organize with the regulators that you can do the clinical rotations in, your, in, in the locality, then we will communicate accordingly. For the case of Uganda, the directive had mean that online exams can't be done at the moment. However, I do understand that there's a process going on with the Ministry of Education and the higher Education Commission to actually work through those details and I'll leave uh, Joseph to give that. Just to let everybody know that we are keen on ensuring that learning remains uninterrupted, but we also are keen on protecting you as our students and keeping you safe from uh, uh, the risk of getting infected with COVID. And as we are in those geographical regions, we also are trying the best we can to adhere to government directives. So we are doing the best we can to keep the learning going, but at the same time, we have to balance your safety and the government directives as they are given. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Unit. I think you have said everything in relation to opening. Uh, I recall that we had shared a circular with the, all our current students updating them on the situation and when we are likely to reopen. And this will be informed by the new directives that the government will issue uh, following its own consultations. So once we are in the know, we'll be able to share with our students as well. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Joseph and the Dean. Uh, uh, Stanley, if you can hear me, uh, the Office of the Registrar, uh, I have uh, three questions here directed to you. So one is after filling and submitting the application, uh, do the applicant have to print out and bring the application form in hard copy? No, once you have filled in the online application form and submitted the application form, you will receive an email from online applications informing you that we have, we have received your application. So you do not need to print out the hard copy and submit to us. Okay. And then the next question is, uh, is there a chance of doing BSN while you continue to work? Yes, the program is quite flexible and classes are offered on two days per week. So once the days have been communicated to you, you can definitely be able to plan on the days when you go to your workplaces and the days when you come to school. So it is pretty flexible and you can be able to manage both work and school at the same time. And then also uh, to add on is uh, uh, when do you share the fee structure? Is it before or after orientation? Uh, the fee structure is usually shared through the finance department. You can get me? Yes, the yes, we fees, can hear. Yes, the fee structure is usually shared with the students when they are picking their offer letters. Over okay, to you, thank you. Yes, thank you. And uh, also, uh, another question, Stanley. Uh, how can you help a student who has passion to excel in his or her studies at AKU but keep failing the entry interviews? Well, uh, this is a peculiar case, and uh, maybe I can talk to this student later, but uh, we've never had students who keeps on failing. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, someone has asked uh, how long is the advanced uh, program? I think that's the APN. So as shared by Isabel, it is two years. Yeah, yeah. Um, just to add on to what uh, Stanley has said, for the for the student, the potential applicant who has passion to study with us and has been struggling with the admission test, please do feel free to directly get in touch uh, with the parent campus. If you're from Kenya, get in touch with uh, us. If you're from Uganda, please to get in touch with uh, Joseph's team, and we'll be happy to have a conversation and support where we can. And the APN program is two years long. Okay, thank you. Uh, someone has also asked uh, if we can be able to share this presentation and uh, it's, uh, we will be able to share this presentation uh, immediately after the session. So we'll, be, uh, we'll share the presentation on your emails. Mandela, before you go to the other questions for people who've raised their hands, there's somebody who's asked about PhD programs. Indeed, the commencing of PhD programs is in our, is in our plan, is in our strategic plan. And uh, we are working on uh, getting the, we are now actually having a team doing the groundwork of the requirements for each of the three countries. And uh, it's in the pipeline. So in another five or so years, we should have started a PhD program. So the school is indeed growing and increasing, especially with its postgraduate uh, education. Thanks. Okay, and I think also this question, uh, you can answer it. For someone who is, wishes to apply for the APN program, but has a GPA of 2.77 with six years experience uh, post BSN, uh, which is below the 3.0 GPA, which is required, but above 2.5, can the work experience count if one has no additional train, training or research done? Um, indeed, the idea here really is for us, a candidate to, to have had enough experience to be able to conceptualize, uh, you know, how, how they will play, whatever role they'll play as, a, as an APN. So for this candidate who has six years experience, my encouragement and a GP of 2.7, I would encourage the candidate to apply for the program and go through the admission process. Chances are the six year experience has given them what they need to be able to effectively succeed in this program. So the answer would be yes, the, the, the candidate should apply. Okay, thank you. And then to Joseph, uh, uh, there's a question here for you. Uh, does AKU uh, in Uganda uh, offer scholarships to the nurses? Uh, yes, thank you, Mandela. And uh, thank you to the person who has asked. Yes, it is true. Uh, for all our programs in East Africa, we do offer scholarships to our students. As Isabel had the detail, these are merit-based scholarships and they do cover a part of the institution. So it's a partial scholarship. Thank you. Thank you. And then uh, there is a question here on uh, future plans on starting other master's programs. And there are two programs that have been asked. One is a, a master's program in neonatal nursing and also a master's program uh, in health research. Are there any plans to start such programs? Um, yes, we, asked, we have started with uh, adult health and midwifery because um, that is where most of the areas where nurse uh, practitioners uh, would be able to start. However, this is not going to stop us to continue to increase uh, specializations as we go along. Um, so, Keep looking at the space. We do have uh, objectives to, again, as we plan for going on to PhD programs, uh, also to expand our master's offerings uh, for other specialties. But at the, main, at the uh, in the mean, in the meantime, uh, we have our adult health, and of course, next year we start our midwifery and see how that goes. Thank you. Okay. To Joseph again, uh, do you have swimming lessons in Uganda as well? And also, uh, someone has also asked, uh, Uganda campus always have a number of interviews before admission. Do, do they still do them? Uh, yes, Mandela, and thank you to the uh, person who has asked. Yes, Uganda also has the swimming program. We do our swimming uh, classes and sessions in Kololo, uh, near the uh, Aga Khan uh, in Nasare School, there is a, an AKES uh, swimming pool 
that's a corporate space and quite spaced and nice and quite private. So all our students are eligible. Whoever expresses interest uh, is able to join the swimming program and there is a trainer too. Uh, going on to the second question, the interviews that are done in Uganda, yes, I note that the applicant indicates they are aware that we have been having uh, interviews on campus uh, whenever we are doing admissions. Thank you. I, and uh, yes, uh, depending on when and how the new normal situation will be, as uh, advised by directives that will come from the government, we will be doing uh, interviews that are complying to the SOPs that the government will provide. If it is uh, possible that institutions are reopened and we can do face-to-face, -face, uh, we will do that and uh, observe the necessary SOPs, which probably would be wearing a mask and social media. But if the uh, opening of the universities doesn't happen, we will again do uh, the whatever the government will have advised, probably have it online, but this is not known now. We will know when new directives come. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And then uh, Ida has asked uh, an inquiry on when the finalist, finalists will be resuming school and an idea if they are going back to summarize community practice. Yes, thank you, Mandela, and thank you, Ida. Uh, yes, I know that you have been doing the community uh, practice with the thing Mary and Ahmed and Shamim. Uh, that program was cut short, just like all other programs. And uh, we are looking forward to when uh, the situation will either return to normal or a new normal will arise that will allow us to operate as will be guided by the directives from the government. And we are looking to start everything that will have stopped halfway. For example, we know that if community placements stopped halfway, clinical placements stopped halfway, and the uh, theory classes had stopped halfway, but uh, we were able to complete those online. So we hope that uh, we will be able to finish everything that we did not finish when we are allowed to do so. Thank you. Okay, and Joseph, uh, another question is, uh, what is the tuition fees for BSN in Uganda? And lastly, yes. is that program two days a week? Yes, uh, the tuition fees uh, in Uganda is uh, uh, 4.6 million shillings uh, uh, for the greater people on the call. Uh, this translates to 1,200 US dollars. Uh, however, uh, we note that uh, this may be slightly above uh, uh, probably the capacity of many uh, nurses and midwives' uh, ability to pay. And the university has put in various uh, avenues to support our candidates into the program. Uh, initially, we allow somebody to join the program uh, upon clearing. 50% of the tuition, and then they can make a payment plan to complete uh, the uh, remaining balance. However, even with the uh, challenges available, we know that uh, they may not be able to finish the payments, and that's why the investor has put in the partial scholarship scheme that we commonly call the Johnson & Johnson scheme. So uh, the candidate uh, is the are free to get more information. This information is available when finally uh, the admission process is over and they join. Uh, during orientation, we provide uh, a lot more information on the scholarship scheme and the uh, uh, payment uh, plans. However, you should uh, uh, be rest assured that uh, uh, the university is constantly thinking of ways to support students. And uh, even when those two fail, the university is happy to further uh, check a case-by-case -case analysis and a dialogue on uh, what is the best way forward. Uh, on the days of school, yes, two days per week. And those days 
are divided into two. That is one day for theory and one day for clinical or community, whichever the case may be, depending on the semester that the candidate is taking on. And those days are uh, assigned, they could be any consecutive days between Monday and Friday. So there would be students that are coming for Monday and Tuesday. Other students may come Tuesday and Wednesday. Other students may come Wednesday and Thursday. And other students may come Thursday and Friday. At the moment, we don't have weekend programs. So our two days are between Monday and Friday, but there will be any two consecutive days. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joseph. To Isabel, uh, is the merit-based scholarship apply only to BSN students or even BSM? Uh, I'll leave Eunice, Dr. Eunice Dirango to answer about the merit scholarship uh, because it's given through the Dean's office. So um, the merit scholarships are, are largely, so the way the scholarship, just like other granting um, agencies work is, when people give money, they give money to a particular cause. So if the merit scholarship are largely given by individuals who want to sponsor the students who are doing the Bachelor of Nursing program. So the merit scholarships have at the moment only been given by donors in Kenya. So they're only applicable to students who are based in Kenya. And it only goes to students who are applying for the Bachelors of Nursing program. That particular um, application is very different in the sense that it only targets a few uh, candidates who are exceptional. So you must have a GPA of above three or 3.2. And you must also be able to demonstrate academic leadership, community service, among many other things. So it's actually, uh, it's actually by its definition, really a merit scholarship. Nonetheless, mm. for the bachelors of midwifery students, uh, we have access to Johnson & Johnson. In addition, for the case of Kenya, Elma. We are working to see if we can expand Elma because this was the first sort of engagement with that particular uh, philanthropist uh, entity. And we are hopeful that we will get more conversations going and expand this also to the programs in, uh, in Uganda. So as you, as you, as potential students, as current students, as alumni continue to excel, we are able to use your stories to bring in more donors and more funding agencies that benefit other students after you do. So thank you. And also another question, uh, I think the Dean is, do the alumni have an alumni ID or some form of identity to show? So we are only just now reconstituting and revamping the alumni association. And I would like to believe this among many other conversations are conversations that will be held uh, by the alumni um, uh, secretariat. Uh, various universities, treat this issue differently. Some give IDs, some don't give IDs. They just recognize you and are able to retreat you or retract your details from the system. So this is something that can be worked on. However, if this question is being asked in the context of access to the library, uh, you, can, you can come to the library and they'll give you the library card if you need to access the, the library in particular. But this is one of the action items that I believe the Alumni Association can work on. Thank you. And also someone has asked, uh, please enlighten on tuition fees for the APN program and also if there are any admission tests. Um, let me start with the admission test. Yes, Aga Khan, because of, of the nature of the programs and the type of candidates we look for, admission tests are part of our admission process. So for the masters in particular, we will have a, a, a test, but we also have a sort of a write-up that uh, the candidates will have to do. In terms of the school fees, the school fees for the APN program is set at 200,000 a semester for now. Okay, and then uh, also in regards to the APN, uh, if someone has a traveling job, uh, now for APN program, how, what is the minimum number of lessons uh, that one is allowed to miss? I did quite catch that. The minimum number of what? Lessons you can miss. Yes, yes. So I think once uh, the program starts, we will have conversations about the, 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 uh, the attendance and all that. 
But uh, just like we've seen with the bachelors in nursing and bachelors in midwifery across the region, we've had a move towards online learning and we are working towards making sure that even for the APN program, we'll make it in such a way that students are also able to access the materials wherever they are. The purpose of making sure that a candidate or a, or a student attends the classes is not necessarily to get a, a person seated on the seat. It's because of the learning experience and the journey. And it's one of the key reasons why the graduates from AKU are very different from graduates from other programs. It's because you're able to study and also grow. It's not just um, learning the content and being able to replicate it in an exam. It's about those other skills that you learn by engaging with your fellow peers uh, in person, but also with the faculty and the staff. So again, I would say that is one of the questions we can follow through once we come through the orientation and once we farmed up the delivery uh, model and of course maximizing on the platform that we have, which is a Moodle platform. Okay, and then also, uh, are there plans to uh, consider uh, short courses or advanced uh, courses like uh, IPC, Infection Prevention and Control, and Nursing Informatics, Nursing Informatics ETC. So Aga Khan School of Nursing and Midwifery across the region has been running short courses and that they are ongoing. I think perhaps what we need to do is communicate the short courses to our alumni as well. So for example, even with the COVID pandemic, we've still been able to do some courses online that are targeted towards COVID. I believe last week in Kenya, there were courses that were run for Moranga County, and there are more courses planned for Turkana County. Uganda has also been running some online courses on IPC and getting the uh, nurses some skills on critical care, among others. So we do run short courses, uh, perhaps, the feedback from the question I take is we, we will need to communicate these courses when they are running to the alumni team in case you are located in a, in a facility or in a county or in a region that is not, um, is, is not directly engaged in the courses. So yes, and uh, one more thing, the courses are usually based on the needs at the time. And so for now, of course, the shift is towards COVID, but we've been doing a lot of trainings on a number of things. So feel free to give us input and feedback on the topic areas we'd want covered in short courses and where you are located. And if your health facility is interested in us training for your teams, we'd be more than happy to have that conversation. Okay, thank you. So I will go to people who have raised hands. So I will start with the Nakafu. Nakafu, if you can hear me, please, you can ask your question. Um, Hello, Nakafu. Can you hear me? Hello, everyone. Pista. Hello. Hello, everyone. My name is Teo Pista. I don't know if I can be heard right now. Yes, we can hear you. Yes, we can yes. hear you. Um, I'm from Uganda. I, I put in my application to join school this year. I'm a nurse educator. I'm a clinical instructor with Malme Uganda. And uh, I'm looking at uh, what uh, Aga Khan is going to do, considering exploring the possibility that we are going to have financial challenges when we are joining school, if school is to start this year. Because um, I've talked to a few friends who have put in their applications, and me too, we are having the salary cuts, some people have ceased getting salaries, especially people who are in the education sector because education is at a standstill. So I'm asking about those possibilities that will be there for us to start school with these COVID-19 challenges. That was my submission, thank you. Over to you, Joseph. Thank you, Mandela. Um, I'm with Gladys, who is our assistant registrar and who supports 100% uh, of the admission processes. And uh, yes, 
she has uh, you know, work topic. She has indicated to me that uh, she received the uh, is some of the applicants from uh, Maldime, where Tokista comes from. So we will be processing those when the, the admissions are closed and we'll be giving you feedback in due time. However, in relation to the challenges of our candidates who may be working in various areas that are either having salary cuts or because of some other issues may have uh, financial challenges, we are aware that this is not something that is uh, affecting one institution only, neither is it affecting only one country. It's a global challenge. And the, as an institution, AKU will be uh, looking and dialoguing to see how best to uh, approach uh, the issue of uh, tuition payment. However, I will let my Dean Eunice uh, be able to enlighten you more on that. Thank you. Uh, I'm afraid you, Eunice has had to go to another meeting. Um, okay. So we can carry on. Okay, thank you. But uh, I was hoping that she would indicate that uh, uh, we have the Johnson & Johnson scholarship scheme that will continue to run and will be able to give support to students who are struggling. It's a, a scholarship scheme that supports scholarship students, that supports struggling students. And I can understand that it will be needed now more than even before. So we are optimistic that we'll continue to run it and we'll be able to support uh, students who need it. Thank you, Topista, and thank you, Mandela, and thank you, Isabella. And to the next person who has raised their hand uh, is Grace. Grace, if you can hear me, please ask your question. Hello, Grace, can you hear us? Okay, uh, we can skip Grace, we'll come back to her later. Uh, we go to Bravo, Bravo Dennis Lukalu. If you can hear me, please ask your question. Yes, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Dennis Bravo from Uganda. Um, I applied for diploma in nursing, but uh, they're always getting replies for, on emails, like we don't get them in time and we keep on wondering what is happening. So can we not stand? Thank you. Gladys. Uh, for the people who have applied on uh, online, uh, we do communicate on emails, and uh, maybe Bravo, you should maybe be checking your emails more often. Thank you. And also, just to let you know that uh, we will be doing uh, another communication immediately after the admission window elapses, which is ending on 29th of this month. So we'll be able to make communication on uh, how we'll be conducting our admission tests and interviews. And then uh, probably when the classes shall start. Uh, we'll go to the next person, uh, Gizemba Nyatwori. If you can hear me, please ask your question. Okay, good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Gisemba Nyatwori. And my question is directed to Joseph. Uh, 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 being a diploma trained nurse from Kenya, is it possible for me to join in Uganda to study the post uh, I mean the BSN there? And uh, do I need to register with the Ugandan Nursing Council or such kind of a board? Okay. 
Yeah, again, another question is that uh, I, when I was trying to apply online, I had some difficulties. Maybe if you can share us with the contact of uh, the ICT department so that they can guide us when we have difficulties while uh, uh, making the application online. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Nyatori Gisemba. Um, yes, it is very possible for a Kenyan nurse to come into our programs and study and complete. Uh, you will not be the first one. We have had quite a number of them that have gone through the program already and completed. And a number of them have continued to practice in Uganda while others have also chosen to go back to Kenya and they were recognized. So there is a process that you have to go through, including getting a Uganda Nurses and Midwives Council uh, registration and license to practice, because it is one of the requirements. If you recall, Isabel had read all of them. Uh, for the second question, which relates to the online uh, admission process. Uh, we will share with you the contact as you have requested, and we will give you support to complete the admission online. Uh, beyond the contact, we had also uh, anticipated that any student who may have challenges wherever they are, maybe because of internet or any other. We have a center at campus here in the, at our campus in Old Kampala, where if you come, you can be assisted to complete the admission online. So there are computers set up, uh, set up which can help you, if at all you are within the central area of Uganda, which is Kampala, Mukono, or Kisun. However, if you're far, then somebody will talk to you online on, or on telephone until you finish the whole program. Uh, however, you don't have to come now uh, because of the uh, directives that you will are aware of that we, we education institutions are closed and we cannot allow people coming in. However, uh, somebody will join with you and we talk to you. So if you can share your telephone in the okay. chat, we will Joseph. get back to you or we will share with you Gladys's uh, telephone contacts that she can uh, follow up with you or you can contact her. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Joseph. Uh, uh, there is a participant uh, by the, the, using the phone Techno Spark. So you have raised your hand. So uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't want to call you Techno Spark, but uh, you can ask your question, please. Uh, uh, the participant using Techno Spark, please ask your question. Yes. Um. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm called Osbert Mohozi uh, and I'm in Uganda. Uh, my question is, I applied uh, uh, earlier this year to, uh, for, for a program, BSN, but um, I, I, I had applied for a scholarship somewhere in one of the organizations here in Uganda and good enough I was offered, but they needed an admission so that I can attach it on my application for the scholarship. And according to the presentation, uh, uh, someone noted that admissions are offered, uh, are offered, okay, after maybe after they give them later as we are reporting. I don't know if I can be able to uh, obtain the admission so that I can secure this scholarship. Thank you. Uh, Mandela, would you like me to respond? Yes, yes, yes. Please go ahead. Okay. Thank you, Osbert, for the question. Uh, we have received the, the applications and we have them. The, because of the COVID-19 pandemic issues, we have not yet uh, sought to complete the process that will allow us to offer admission. That's quite unfortunate. Because by now, you would actually be having it if it was not for the coronavirus uh, pandemic. But because the institutions were closed, we could not proceed to complete the process. 
So until now, we are unable to offer admissions because an admission is offered after we go through the process of uh, uh, testing and then uh, we dialogue on the results and then uh, approve the admission list. After that, we can offer an admission. So until now, we are unable to offer an admission. However, if you need to uh, communicate to the awarding body of the scholarship, you can indicate to them that you have applied to us and that uh, you are waiting to hear from us. If they need a letter from us saying that, yes, you have applied and you're waiting to be admitted or waiting for feedback, that is something that we can dialogue and give. Thank you. I think the answer is satisfactory. Okay, thank you. And thank you, Joseph. Uh, to Isabel, uh, there is a question here from one of the Kenyan participants. Uh, how are they going to navigate virtual learning in hard to reach areas with network challenges? Um, we are planning on, uh, for the new students, what we are planning to do is once you are admitted, uh, if the possibility of face-to-face -face learning is not possible, uh, we are planning to have a training in September in order to be able to train everybody on how to access. Uh, for our current students, we are giving them data battles so that they're able to access internet. Um, so that is uh, what we are doing so far to ensure that, uh, m because most of the people, the issues they're having is the battles because sometimes uh, you may need to have a class discussion that takes about an hour and that uh, uh, involves you spending money on internet bundles. So we are looking uh, on how to do that. Uh, we also do have an online learning platform which is called Moodle, uh, where we will be able to put in recordings for all the lessons. Uh, so you can be able to access that without uh, having to attend uh, to keep your internet on for about an hour. You can be able to download all the lessons, uh, do your activities in a shorter time and with less expense. Um, so we are going to utilize the online learning platform as much as possible so that wherever you are in Kenya, uh, you will be able to access uh, the information that you require. Uh, so for new students, so that we can be able to learn who is having challenges, what challenges they are having, uh, how much are they able to, or what skills level do they have to be able to do online learning. Uh, we will make sure that you come at least two weeks before the start uh, of the program to have training and for us to be able to interact with you and know where you are. Um, so that support we are aware of and we will do our best to make sure that uh, no one is left behind. Thank you. Thank you, Isabel. Uh, I have Grace again online. Uh, Grace, if you can ask your question now. Hello, Grace, if you can hear me, please ask your question. Good afternoon. Hello. 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 Um, this is Grace from Uganda. Yes, go ahead, please. Uh, this is Grace from Uganda. Um, I'm trying to, it, it's not a question, but it's just an advice to the Aga Khan University. This is an international university, right? Um, there is an exam called the Netflix X that is done in the States. So we were gathered somewhere trying to do it and we did go through. Um, and at the end of it all, someone was like, if we can talk to the Aga Khan team, because she's an alumni, if we can talk to the Aga Khan team, so as to bring this exam to East Africa, because in Africa, it's done in South Africa and Lagos. So she was like, if we can talk to some, some university like Aga Khan, 
said that the exam is brought to East Africa. How is it? I know it's not part of this, but I'm just bringing this around. Would you please help us? Can it be sent to the administration? That is my question. Okay. Joseph, maybe we'll to respond to that. Yes. Thank you, Mandela, and uh, thank you, Grace. Thank you for attending the call also. Uh, we are aware about the NCLEX uh, exam for nurses uh, wishing to move to another country, especially the US. The examination centers have uh, a different accredited accreditation process that they have to go through in order for uh, their country centers to be registered. And usually it is driven by different interests uh, for uh, supporting migration of nurses and midwives to the developed world. Uh, while we agree with you and we empathize with you that is a challenge and sorry that you took the exam and did not uh, make it because there are also costs related to it. Uh, as a, a university we have uh, a philosophy and uh, a thinking, a school of thought that we would like uh, our nurses to the best that they can stay and support the local environments that uh, uh, they find themselves in, that is within Uganda or within the different countries that they have taken the programs. Uh, however, it is uh, something that we have taken note of and we will think about it. And uh, maybe when this COVID-19 pandemic is over, you could uh, pass our campus if by that time, uh, you are still within Uganda, maybe we could dialogue a bit more and see how to advise you on avenues of how to still meet your dream if your dream is to move uh, in that direction. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. As Zablon, you are raising your hand so he can go ahead and ask your question. Yes, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Yeah, now my concern goes to uh, our NDA semester exams. Following the suspension of face-to-face uh, -face learning due to COVID-19 and the communication from the university is that uh, exams will be done when we, we, we will assume the normal classes. Now I'm wondering, suppose now the suspension may take a little bit longer. Are we going to continue with our semester two online learning before doing semester one exams? That's um, thank you for the question. Um, we, like I said, depending on um, the updates that we are getting from the government and the directives, uh, we currently know in Kenya there is a meeting going on between the Gov Ministry of uh, education and learning institutions and regulators to figure out about uh, return to school. Uh, however, if, like I have said, our objective is to ensure that we do not interrupt learning because we have other means of making sure that learning continues. Um, so if we are not able to come back to do face-to-face -face exams, of course, we will uh, address the issue of doing proctored uh, online examinations. So there is that window is still open. Um, and depending on what decisions we make, we'll be able to uh, communicate in good time. Thank you. Hey. Uh, thank you, Isabel. So I think I've gone through almost all the questions. And if you think I've skipped uh, your question, you can raise your hand. But as of now, I will hand over the session to Isabel and Joseph, maybe for their final comments. And then we are uh, able to wind up. OK, so from Kenya, mine is to really thank you for uh, having attended this open day, um, we realized that 
uh, we need to use and um, to be creative about being able to make sure that people out there uh, know what is going on and are able to continue with uh, improving themselves professionally and uh, improving in their education and development. So thank you all so much for coming. Um, we uh, are not just going to finish it here as an open day, but our offices and uh, our contact people, our marketing person, uh, Mr. Crispinas Mandela will be in contact. Uh, our registrars, we have Asha, we have Stanley, we have Gladys in Uganda and so on. Um, so please keep in touch, ask questions, write emails, um, use the WhatsApp uh, groups to ask. If you belong to a WhatsApp group and you ask a question, someone can be able to direct you to us uh, to intervene or give a response. So thank you so much. God bless you. Stay safe. Uh, and we hope we'll keep in communication and you will be able to join us uh, for our next programs. Thank you so much. Over to Joseph. Uh, thank you, Isabel, and thank you, Mandela. I also would like to join my team uh, to thank you uh, all who have been able to make it to the, uh, our virtual open day and webinar, uh, especially our prospective students, and those are candidates who have applied to our programs. And uh, sorry that uh, you have to wait for this long because of the COVID-19 pandemic. But we are optimistic that when things get better, we'll be uh, open uh, when the government uh, give us that permission so that we can serve you. I also want to thank our current students who have been able to join. Uh, thank you. And we'll continue to look forward when the investors will be open so that we can serve you. We also want to thank our alumni who have uh, uh, been long gone, but you continue to touch base with us. And when we call on you, you still have the interest to uh, join and come and uh, uh, share life with us, uh, whether through a webinar like this or through other uh, forums where we have been engaging you. With that said, thank you very much. We call on you all to also continue to share our uh, information on our dimension. We have extended our dimension uh, timeline to end of June, specifically to 29th of June, which is this month. If there is anybody there who has not yet got the chance, please share with them the information. And the, the Office of the Registrar is, is hoping to give you support uh, where uh, you meet any challenges. We have shared your telephone contact, the official mobile number, and you can reach out to them. Uh, we encourage you to stay safe uh, so that uh, at the end of this pandemic, we will have uh, uh, live people that we can interact with, that can continue to uh, support the healthcare systems and they continue to ensure that the things move uh, forward. We look forward to serve you when the opportunity comes. Thank you very much and stay safe. Greetings Thank from you. all my team, whatever they are. I know that there are faculty and staff who joined from different locations. Would like also to say thank you to you all. Okay. Uh, thank you, Joseph and Isabel. And maybe I will just uh, invite the Office of the Registrar, starting with uh, Stanley and Asha, to also just say something. Uh, Stanley and Asha, if you can hear me. Thank you so much, Mandela, for this opportunity. It's been a pleasure having all these stakeholders in this forum. We hope that you will be able to contact us and we'll, we will help you in all the challenges that you're going through or with all the information you require for these for this, uh, programs that you're interested in. Again, welcome to Aga Khan University and we look forward to having a meaningful relationship with all of you. My colleague Stanley has stepped out, but maybe Gladys can carry on and say something. Uh, this is Gladys from Uganda. Thank you very much for joining. And uh, I really appreciate for the short time which uh, we made you uh, come in contact with us. And I really appreciate the applicants from Uganda. You really done a good job. You have joined the forum very well. And also our alumni and our students. Thank you very much. Next time, maybe we'll have another forum like this. So thank you very much uh, to the participants.
to the dean and also the executive officer for School of Nursing, uh, Juliet. I know she is online. And also to the ICT department led by Daniel and Marty who are behind this uh, webinar. And, and uh, to all the applicants, uh, I'm expecting to see you soon, probably in class after the dust settles. So from my end, I have uh, nothing more to say, but I've shared my email. Uh, just in case you have anything to share, you can write to us, or maybe you have anything to inquire, and then we'll be able to get back to you. So asante ni sana, uh, that's why we say thank you in Kiswahili. And uh, also may God protect you, people who are in the, on the fr front line in the fight against uh, Corona. Also, so Isabel, I think you can uh, tell us if we can wind up or still continue. <laughs> yes, let's wind up. A, a big thank you to all of you, whether you are faculty, whether you are an applicant, uh, whether you are an alumni or part of the team that has prepared this open day. Uh, a lot of appreciation. Um, and let us pray that we, being on the front line, are going to be able to overcome uh, this COVID and get our population uh, back on track. So God bless you all. We shall close here and hope to meet another time. Thank you. Thank you.